last but not least, uh, the, um, we talked about ethnic persecution, we talked about religious persecution of Baha'is. Now we will have our next speaker, is Sami Emri, uh, is an attorney, um, a civic activist and community leader. He's the co-founder of the 30 Years Later, a leading uh, civic uh, action organization formed in 2007, whose mission is to promote participation of Iranian American Jews in American civic, political, and Jewish life. So please join me in welcoming. Thank you for the very kind invitation. In the interest of time, I will speak briefly and quickly. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Sam Yebri. I'm the president of 30 Years After, an Iranian-American Jewish civic organization with chapters in Los Angeles and in New York. 30 Years After represents the over 80,000 member strong Iranian-American Jewish community. Uh, many of us left Iran in the 1980s and 1990s, and according to the U.S. Census and a report by MIT, as we all know, Iranian Americans are among the best educated, most successful immigrant communities in the entire country. We've made meaningful contributions to the arts, to politics, to business, to medicine. Uh, however, I'm here, like my, my colleagues here, to give voice to our family and friends and neighbors who are still living in the Islamic Republic of Iran. There are 20 to 25,000 Iranian Jews who still live in Iran. 33 years ago, amid a tumultuous revolution, the relatively comfortable lives of Iran's Jews changed virtually overnight. Community business leaders were executed, property businesses were seized, and common Jewish Iranians were arrested on invented claims of being Zionist spies and housed in the infamous Evin prison, where the regime's political prisoners were tortured, and to this day where American hikers Shane Bauer and Josh Fatal await their fate. Like many of us in this room, we have families who uh, sh share, have anecdotes about what it was like to be in Evin prison. My grandfather uh, was one of the relatively lucky ones. He spent three days in the prison at the outbreak of the revolution, and as a local dentist, he, he was fortunate to be released when one of his patients recognized him and knew that he was not a threat. Uh, however, the, the shadow of the revolution and the regime's tactics cast a long shadow over the Jews of Iran to this day. A prominent example is the Shiraz 13. In 2013, Jews in the city of Shiraz were arrested, charged, tried, and convicted of, be, of allegedly being spies for Israel. Only when the national community spoke up in outrage were they released and their lives spared. Over the last 30 years, 25 Jews lost their lives at the hand of the regime that we know of, and, but yet an entire community still lives in fear for their security and safety. This fear has been heightened over the last few years by the regime's vitriolic anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism, manifested by its calls for Israel's destruction, by Holocaust denial, by the desecration of Jewish cemeteries and synagogues. Yet, as we've heard today, the Jews are not alone. According to the 2010 U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom annual report, the government of Iran continues to engage in systemic, ongoing, and egregious violations of religious freedom, including prolonged detention, torture, and executions based entirely on the religion of the accused due in large part to the worsening conditions for religious minorities in Iran and the dangerous journeys required to escape Iran that Lautenberg Amendment originally passed in 1989 to facilitate refugee processing of Soviet Jews at U.S. embassies in Rome and Vienna was amended in 2003 to do the same for Iran's Jews, Baha'is, and Christians being processed in Austria. Under a program established by the U.S. State Department, and negotiate with the government of Austria, members of certain Iranian religious minority groups can receive visas to travel to Austria where they are safe while the U.S. government processes their applications for refugee resettlement. Without this amendment, U.S. refugee processing in Austria of Iranian Christians, Jews, and Baha'i would be limited or even terminated. At the end of 2010, there were close to 2,700 people in the processing pipeline, 
some 600 of these, and everyone who applies from now on will not be eligible for the processing in Vienna without the Lautenberg Amendment being extended immediately. Since 1990, the amendment has been renewed annually in appropriations legislation. Uh, in 2011, it was included. It was included, but it was only extended until June 1st, 2011. This program provides a critical, critical lifeline for thousands of religious minorities escaping persecution in countries that have long been recognized as, as tolerating or engaging in severe violations of religious freedom, especially Iran. If the program is not renewed, religious minorities in Iran will be stranded there, unable to access the prote protections of the United States, or forced to cross the through the borders of Pakistan or Turkey where conditions for asylum seekers are extremely dangerous. The Iranian American community and the Jewish American community stand together arm in arm in urging Congress per, per, to persuade the House Judiciary Committee to renew the Lautenberg Amendment, an amendment that is consistent with America's interests in the region and consi consistent with America's highest values of justice, freedom, and opportunity. Thank you.